Hello people and welcome aboard to watch yet another Carcassonne analysis video. This time we will be taking a look at a Mind Sports Olympiad semi-final game that I played a week ago against a Colombian Sergio Antolines. This will be the first of the four parts which I will make covering all of my games in the semi-finals and all of my games in the grand finals. There were so many interesting moments in those games that I have decided to make a separate video out of each of those games. Now, let's dive in to the first game against Remcad or Sergio Antolines. We are the starting player and we take four points, as of course is a must. Red starts a two-point road. Now we have the first decision of the game. We can either go here with this divider and start a city facing to left. But this would start a field early on in the game and I am not such a huge fan of creating early fields if I can avoid that situation. Furthermore, I am also not a fan of leaving an empty city cap next to my opponent's road because if my opponent grabs a city cap with a road, he will be able to both score four points from the city and score one extra point for his road. Whereas if we go here and my opponent grabs a city cap, maybe with a road, he's going to score four points over here but he will not prolong his road. And placing the divider over here will also not create an early field. That is why I decided to go over here. Sergio grabs a monastery which will also control my one-point city. Although it does make his road slightly vulnerable if I grab any city tile, like for example a triple city with a field, and place it here, then he will be waiting for a starting tile for quite a long while. But it's not like he had any other options really, because you have to meeple this monastery at the beginning of the game. And this is absolutely the best spot at the moment because it controls my city cap. We grab two points. And red decides that they don't want to see my city getting finished, but rather they want to benefit from the city cap themselves as well and force me to share this castle. Now although he has two meeples tied in this square and I only have one, it is not really dangerous at all for red because the other meeple is a monastery, which will score 8 points if it gets blocked. Most often, a blocked monastery scores 8 points at the end of the game. And his side of this castle has squares to build a ruin with, whereas I do not. So. He can either choose from two options, either he can grab a triple city and just connect here and try to complete his monastery, or he can try 
building around this vulnerable square and try to block my meeple for one point whereas he will be getting a ton of points for a ruin plus the monastery. We start another city and we start it here just so that it will slightly restrict this open city cap. I could also start it here, pointing left, and then try completing the city, grabbing another city cap and then blocking this square with another city cap or any city tile. But uh, I'm not such a fan of this move because it creates a road monastery spot. And if Dremcad decides to limit this square to a road monastery after I finish my after I finish my four point city, then we will be flipping for a road monastery. But red will benefit from that road monastery significantly more than I would, because that road monastery will be completing his road and it will also surround his monastery. So I feel more comfortable starting a four point city on the right. Sergio now cannot grab four easy points from that city cap that we just sort of kind of blocked. So he will save his road from being in danger and start a city of his own. We continue with scoring quick points, which is obviously great for us. And now comes a powerful move by Red. Although he abandons his plan of blocking this square, there is now a new threat. Because I started my city over here, Dreamcat can now get a triple city with a field or a road triangle and place it here. Let's draw it the right way. Place it here and he can try trapping my city. So we will have to deal with that threat. And the road monastery, it would be a great tile to place here. But like I said earlier, I'm not such a fan of creating huge fields at the beginning of the game. And this would do exactly that, because if we go road monastery over here and leave a spot for a starting tile to go over here, then whoever finishes this city with the set starting tile will create at least a nine point field with this castle, this castle and most likely this castle, maybe even this castle. There is also another thing that I don't like when going with Road Monastery over here, and that is that uh, Red can grab any city tile. More dangerously, they can grab a field triangle and place it over here, attacking this shared feature and also very inconveniently for me, if I ever wanted to get this monastery back, I would have to complete the connection over here. And also, if there is any tile over here, then it creates a possibility to block my monastery here and this city by grabbing maybe a road here, another one here, and another one here, and then I have two meeple strapped for, for a maximum of nine points. 
Now it's not going to be that likely to happen, but I really would like to prevent that kind of scenario at all costs. So instead, I'm going to create a threat myself, a counter threat over here. So we go with the monastery over here. What this does is it controls, of course, this square where red has a city and it also is kind of leeching from this monastery. But more importantly, it makes this road super uncomfortable to continue with any tile. Because say he grabs a, a straight road like he now has. If he goes here, we can grab anything, any road tile or any city tile or anything, any tile at all. And we can go here and try starting to block this square to exactly one point, which is not going to be a good place for Sergio to be at if that comes into existence. If Sergio grabs a curve, which would be a, a horrible, horrible play, we can grab another curve and again limit this square to a dagger, but now with three meeples waiting for that instead of just two. Even if Sergio goes with a crossroad over here, the same principle applies. We can grab a crossroad or a curve or anything else and go here and limit this square. So that is the reasoning behind this move instead of going for full on equity. Tremcat now decides to not continue his road for exactly the reasons that I said and instead grabs another road. We fortunately do not get blocked with our city and we are able to retrieve it. Red is able to get a triangle, but this also isn't super comfortable because I can get a triple city, direct this castle to the right, and then he has two meeple stuck waiting for a starting tile in a, a vulnerable spot because he wouldn't be able to continue his castle if this move would be done with a triple city. Because if he continues it, then it directly gives us a platform to block these meeples with any, well, pretty much any city tile. We decide to surround our monastery. And although this is now starting to create a field, there isn't really any better spot. Because now our objective has changed. If we can get these two meeples stuck, or at least prolong their completion for a long time, it will be a great advantage for me. Which is why we meeple the northern city, and we also leave a city cap next to my own monastery. Red has to complete his second road, nothing more he can do. And now we have yet another decision. We could just take five points over here, four points for the city and one point for the monastery. But taking into account that our plan is to be a menace 
as soon as possible and cause as much harm as soon as possible over here. I think this is a bigger priority. And that is exactly what we do. Red grabs his monastery meeple back and starts a field. And now the thing is that uh, we have pretty much like two options. Well, maybe three, but first of all, we could go over here, pre-finish our monastery and protect the square so that there are more tiles than just like starting tile or a triple city that our opponent might restrict this square to. We could also go over here, maybe drop a meeple of our own and kind of try claiming this castle for ourselves, because I doubt that Dremcad would in that case be completing this city by themselves, at least for as long as this situation is live over here. Or we can try really just start completing our plan and to get these meeples stuck. So we could start a road over here, then grab a city tile pointed downwards so that a triple city would be the only tile that goes here, then grab a curve and finish the block and finish our plan. And given that this our monastery is not really in a threat of any kind at the moment. And given the possibility that our blocking plan is able to work still, I think that is our top priority. So we start a road and create more threat of blocking everything over here. Sergio realizes the threat of course and he decides to kind of pre-save his castle. But this allows us to take a different route, not to limit this to a triple city with a road, but we can now go over here and we can try getting one of the five remaining road Doritos. And we can try placing it over here so that the city will continue to the right and it will block both of these meeples. If that plan is successful, that might already seal the game. Because coming back from a two meeple disadvantage so early in the game is going to be extremely difficult in matches of this skill level. With three meeples, Red starts another monastery we get to get five points or two rather because one point for the monastery and four points for the castle but it also adds three points to red's field red adds one point to their monastery and we finish our own monastery and grab the road Red grabs first of the road Doritos and goes over here to slightly mess with my road 
and to prevent me from attacking to this castle with any city tile with a road. Now we have the plan of grabbing the road Dorito, so we might as well try to pre-complete our loop road. Red wants to use a shielded tile and starts a castle. Now we have pre-completed our six-point road. And now we just wait. Three points for red, trying to build his city with care. But I actually would have preferred him to just take four points over here. Three for the road and one for the monastery. And just finish this city with city caps. Since we have four meeples remaining, we might as well attack this castle and prevent a disastrous scenario that it actually gets completed. Red is able to benefit for the city cap that he draws, which is one of the only city caps that he can actually benefit from at the moment. It's always not so comfortable starting cities and leaving yourself with zero meeples. So seven points for red. And we have a regular curve. Now I gave this a long long thought because there aren't really all that many things to do with it. We could start a five point road to have a good use for straight roads, but I'm not such a fan of surrounding my opponent's monastery. We could also do, maybe do the same move with a farmer, but I think actually that would be kind of horrible because it pre-completes a five-point road and it enables our opponent to have a chance to get a meeple back. We could drop a farmer and go with the curve like this. But again, I don't like surrounding my opponent's monastery. Therefore, we go with the only remaining option and try to get even a little bit of value out of this curve. And we go over here. And the purpose of this move is to just protect our road a little bit. It also creates a monastery spot and we are more likely to take it because we have three meeples and our opponent has just one. Red grabs a curve and does the only thing he should do, which is go over here and save his features. With another regular curve, we now have the same options as before, but now they are more enticing where some of them are more enticing. Because now we have a guaranteed way of getting to the field whenever red draws the crossroad. And when we go over here, we can also connect to the field from here. So even if Red would never draw the city crossroads, it wouldn't matter, because we can still get to the field. But they do. They do immediately draw one of the two remaining city crossroads, 
and they have really no other option but to save their meeples and let my meeple to the field. Now they are nicely almost even on the scoreboard and they have three meeples to three meeples to play with. Unfortunately we received the road to Dorito a little too late to execute our master plan. And we don't have too many great options to do with this tile. We could connect to the city and just have three points. But now that we are on the field and we don't need this spot anymore to connect with, we kind of need to block it. Because this is a volatile square. A huge volatile square. And we also have a four-point road just waiting for anyone to grab a crossroad. And since we did not grab a crossroad, our opponent is a bit more likely to get the crossroad first. That's why we have to remove this option and we have to take another road. Nothing much to do for the red. Adding one point to their city and slightly restricting my connection to it. Now we have several options that we could do with a starting tile. We could go over here and take one point to our road and maybe ensure that we might be able to get the road completed. But this creates an attacking spot to the field and let's say our opponent grabs two curves and connects over here then our road has increased in size by four points but it continues over here exactly to a spot where we are at the moment but it would be even more vulnerable since it would have more blocking tiles to completely block the road because this square would also be available for red to block. Also, if we go with the starting tile over here, then our opponent might be enticed to grab a divider, go over here and try to win this city, which is also not exactly what we would like. Another option we could do is we could start a city over here. Because there are still three vanilla city caps remaining. And chances are quite good to finish this city and get rather easy six points. But with only two meeples, I'm not such a fan of waiting for those three tiles to get my meeple back. So we go with the final option, which I think is also the strongest. We go over here and we meeple the city. What this does is it indirectly continues our road we can start a safe city and we create a blocking platform for the red monastery. So we grab, let's say, a Dorito with a road. So we go over here and block this meeple. Red does not draw a saving tile and this monastery is 
quite a bad tile at the moment because there are no good spots for it. But with three meeples you still kind of have to make use of it. And so red indeed wants to meeple it. Which I can't really blame. We finish our city. And red draws a saving tile. And this is where Dreamcat surprised me massively. Because you would think that they go over here and meeple the road. Because there are still three regular curves remaining that would then fit over here. And it would basically be a four point road versus a four point road. Plus he would be kind of ensuring that he gets this meeple out from the monastery. But what they decide to do is infinitely more riskier. They go to the same place, but they go to the field. And this is just utterly bad. Because there are so many tiles that I can just go over here with. And limit this square to a crossroads. And then this meeple is going to be stuck on a three-point field for perhaps the rest of the game. So basically, Dreamcat is saying that, okay, I'm going to risk a huge amount of here. And I might be getting trapped with a three-point meeple. But with 27 tiles remaining, this is definitely not the move that he should make. He doesn't need to win the field at the moment. Well, we don't draw a blocking tile. So basically our move is to just start another castle at a safe place. And Dreamcat immediately draws a curve. But wait, instead of actually Going through with the plan and going over here, connecting to the 12 point field, or in that case, 15 point field, he decides to get his meeple back from the monastery and meeple the road. So, extra, extra greedy move. I gotta say, this is a huge mistake. A huge one. Because even though you basically did five points and your goal is to share the road, you are still risking this meeple. The whole idea of this meeple is to grab a curve and join the big field. He had the opportunity, but he didn't follow through with it. Now I can understand that uh, he doesn't want to have a nine point road just for me, but that road will be compensated by the field, which I would have to attack. And there is only one spot to really attack from because I can't really attack from here because I have a castle over here. So it would put my castle at risk of getting blocked. So this is, this is just a huge, huge, a, a huge, huge mistake. Well, we still don't draw a blocking tile. And so we just gotta 
finish our four point city. Now, red does not draw a curve, but two city crossroads are out. Only one remaining. There are also two more road Doritos. So if he goes over here, he will have two tiles to connect to this large field. And I only have one blocking tile, being that city crossroad. And this is also a great tile to do this with, because if you limit this to a city, then that means that I cannot attack from the left with another meeple. But instead, he decides that he just wants to take two points and block my connection to the ruin. Which is sort of kind of understandable. But again, it is not the priority. It is not the priority. It shouldn't be. Clearly, of course, red disagrees, but I think anything but going here with this tile is a mistake. Well, luckily for red, we still don't draw. We still don't draw a blocking tile. We can't go over here because, like I said, still two road triangles remaining, and this would also deny any opportunities for me to reconnect from the left. And we also need to connect to the ruins, so this is the perfect tile to do that. Red draws the same tile as I did, but with a shield. Again, anything but here. Mistake in my books. Any other move but here is just out of, of the question. Red decides that um, there are alternative options. And Red de decides that the alternative option is to block the field connection in the south. Again, this is not the priority. It just isn't. You first have to make sure that you can actually get this meeple to the field before you can afford to block any other field connections. Well, we still do not draw a blocking tile. We still do not draw that. But luckily, there is only one curve plus city tile remaining that red can now use to go over here if we get a city tile over here. And now I think it might already be worth doing because now it would be basically a 50-50. We would be tossing a coin between who gets the crossroads first or who gets the road triangle first. And I would certainly take those odds given that I just can't seem to have any luck with blocking tiles. But since we cannot do a, any kind of semi-block with this tile, then we decide to continue our road in the south for one point and trying to get this four point road meeple back at some point. Because there are still three crossroads remaining. Red doesn't 
draw such a good tile because he now only has one meeple in hand. He could go over here, which is kind of what I think he might have to even do at this point to sort of secure this connection with a field part pointing to the right just so that he could have a handful of curves still remaining that would fit there. But he decides otherwise, starts surrounding his monastery and grabs a one point city, leaving the other city cap towards the ruin so that it cannot be taken by me. But finally, 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 we grab a straight road and we go here. We are able to block the connection. And given that red is now at zero meeples, I did give it a good thought of dropping a farmer here. But I cannot be sure if I will actually draw a crossroad. And if I do not, then this meeple will actually be even worse than this three-point meeple. So I would basically lose my advantage that I would be able to get by actually being able to block this said meeple. So I decide against it. I will not be dropping a farmer here, which is unfortunate because that does allow Red to grab a crossroad and get a meeple back. But I was kind of counting on that he would be getting a meeple back soon enough anyway, because he can get a meeple back with any city cap. So that's why I didn't really feel like it's worth to meeple this um, side of the field, just so that I could maybe prevent Red getting a meeple back immediately. But now we have three meeples in hand and we are in a good spot because we are plus five on the scoreboard. We are with this road, we are plus nine. This city is equal. This field is equal. This field is only three points. So it's so it puts us at plus six and then this city plus this monastery puts us at plus minus zero, but we are plus two meeples ahead. So we are in a great, great spot, which is why we can afford to place a seven point monastery and hope for a crossroad plus a straight road to get this meeple back rather easily. Although we need a crossroad here as well. I mean, we can't really say no to a seven point monastery at this stage of the game when we are ahead on meeples and after this move we will be plus seven. Red draws another crossroad takes three points. But more importantly, they create a possibility to grab multiple curves and still make this three point farmer worthwhile. So we might have to do something about this in the future. But I reckon at this point that just placing a straight road over here or over here will do the trick and he will not try to get a meeple to the field anymore. Going to be of course better if we add a straight road here because if we added it here then our opponent could grab another straight road and go over here and then still join to the field through a curve. With the Quad City we do 
exactly what most players expect. We prolong Red's city by a mile because he only has one meeple, so it's going to be rather uncomfortable for him to really invest it to anything. This does have its downsides because there is still one triple city remaining, which Red could place here and then connect to the big ruin with a triangle. But given that there are only two triangles remaining and one triple city, I think I should not be too worried about this situation. So what Red decides to do is to not only keep the chances of connecting to this ruin alive, but now he can also use any city cap and go over here or over here and threaten to actually finish the 12 point city. Now two moves that I had in mind at the time. We can either go here and hope that we get at least one of the remaining three large city tiles large city tile in this case meaning either a triple city or a triangle just so that we can neutralize the threat of red actually trying to join this ruin or we could go over here and try to trap this city with any triangle or a triple city because there are no triple cities with a field that would then go over here but i think this would have been too risky because if we go here and we meeple the city cap which we would have to because we cannot allow red to grab a city cap and score four easy points, then if and when red grabs any city tile at all, he can go with a city cap over here, be only one tile away from completing his 12 point city, and also restrict my one point city over here. If they grab a triple city or a triangle, then they can pretty much do the same thing. Go with a triangle over here and try to finish the city. And restricting our city over here. Or if they grab a triple city, then they could even go over here of course pointing the city part away from our one point city so that we could not connect but the point is that i felt this was too risky i felt that there was a large threat that our city would be blocked at only one point and i don't think that would have been enough to actually justify the meeple after that. So we go with the safer option and just try to connect to Red's castle at the top. And just like so, Red grabs the triple city. They will still try to execute the idea of connecting to the ruin. They also add one point to the monastery. But the threat of connecting to the ruin is of course what makes this move especially threatening. Because there are only two triangles remaining. So there is always a possibility that red draws both of those triangles and gets a huge ruin. 
which we would have to compensate somewhere else, somehow. Well, as the first compensation, we get four points. Red gets two points and gets to completely block our monastery. And now the situation is that we are only three points ahead with no guarantees if we are going to get a triangle over here or not. And if my opponent grabs a triangle, they will instantly get 12 points with only one move. That would put us at minus 9. And seeing that we only have one meeple, we can't really anymore rely on trying to start small cities. But instead, now that our opponent has used the final remaining crossroad. There is a very good chance to actually connect to this large field. Large meaning 12 points, so it's not that massive, but it is big enough for us in this scenario. And the move is that we go over here and we drop a ninja farmer. Now at the time of placing the straight line, there are five curves which can connect us to the field. Some of them will give an opportunity for red to then drop a farmer here and connect with the second meeple, but they would also be left without meeples at that point with really no real way of scoring points other than grabbing a Dorito and going over here. And since we are plus three, if we get one of those two triangles, I'm very, very confident that we will win the game. Now red, instead of going for a blocking attack over here or over here, both work. They decide to go over here, not only to add one city cap to their field, but now they also have a chance to grab two more curves and loop all the way around, which was exactly the reason they took three points like this with the crossroad in the first place. So now they are trying to put that plan into fruition. We of course cannot let that happen, so we go over here and we add this straight line specifically to the northern road so that we will be able to possibly harass the city cap. Now Tremcat surprises me here because he now goes for a blocking attack. But I think Red is doing their blocking attack from the wrong direction. I think a better one would have been here. Because now that they go over here, one of the blocking tiles that they need is a triangle with a road. And if they get that, then it would be very handy over here if I have not gotten a triangle with a field earlier. Also, the other tile that he can now block with is a starting tile. And he could also grab seven points with it, 
because the thing is that we are still only plus three because we have not connected to red's part of the ruin and we also have not connected to this field we don't have really anything to do with a monastery so we are just going to add it here and possibly be able to prevent Dremcad from grabbing anything and placing it over here and taking a six point field and adding one point to their monastery. Now although we placed the straight line, Red's plans of connecting to the main field are not over because they decide to still create the loop. But the thing is, they only have two tiles remaining and if they get both of those tiles, one curve and a starting tile, that would mean that we are guaranteed to join this farm with our second meeple. Now given that we are three points ahead, if we successfully grab a curve and go here, we are going to be plus six. If red manages to create the loop, they will be getting a six point road and they will be seemingly at plus minus zero. But because this field is now even, and red has an additional three points here, which they would be giving away if they connect to this 12 point field when my second meeple is also in it. It means that this loop is not actually worth six points. It's going to be worth three points, which is why I think that with this extender that Red added here to block, he should have realized that I was only plus three points at the time. If I connect, I will be plus 18. So what they needed to do, instead of creating a loop, they should have gone with the extender over here and not even meeple the city, then hope for a city cap and to be able to make an 11 point move and also hope to get both of the remaining triangles. That way it would be an 11 point here and another 12 point over here plus maybe additional points over here or over here if they draw the field triangle as the second triangle. That, I think, should have been the winning plan for red. Because I'm going to say this again, I think in no scenario will this loop work. It will not bring enough points for Dremcad to win this game. Well, we grab a triangle, but we still have to think, is it better to connect to Red's castle, or is it better to connect to the field? Well, if we go here, we kind of have to assume that Red will draw the second triangle. When we connect to the field, we will be plus 18. When Red connects to the ruin, they will get 12 points. They can also, before connecting to the Ruin, grab a city cap and score 7 points on their field. Now given that we have absolutely no chance of getting more points from anywhere after this connection, unless we grab the second triangle, that means that if Red completes this castle, for seven points, 
and on their final move they grab the final remaining triangle and grab 12 points for the ruin they will win by one point they will win which is why we are going to connect to red's castle now we are plus six and as a matter of fact red still has a chance to win if they go over here take the castle for seven points and hope that they hit the jackpot on their final move and get the final curve they win the game because after grabbing this seven point move over here they are going to be plus one and without the curve we will have no chances of grabbing any extra points but what they do does not allow such thing because we connected ourselves to red's castle we are now at plus six and with this dagger move hoping to get the starting tile they cannot actually win by getting the starting tile they cannot win because if they get the starting tile that means that we will get the final remaining curve and we will connect to the field for plus 15 points putting us at plus 21 if red gets the starting tile and they go over here it is going to get them actually not 12 but nine points for the field because they already have three points on it so nine plus a six point road so 15 points which is the same that we get and we would still be plus six however how they can still win after this move is again if they grab the final remaining curve and we get the starting tile as our penultimate tile because we are plus six at the moment we cannot grab any points unless we go here which will not be possible without the curve if we get the starting tile we cannot prevent red from going over here with the curve and getting seven points six for the field and one for the monastery putting them at plus one we would be left with the field triangle which cannot give us any points so this means as a recap that after this dagger move the only possibility that red wins is that we instead of this curve get a starting tile and red draws the curve any other scenario and we win with this curve our move is obviously clear we connect ourselves to the field for plus 15 points red does not even draw the starting tile and has to settle with the seven points and the starting tile will bring us no additional value anymore so that is just a discard And this is how the first game of the Mind Sports Olympiad semi-finals ends and puts me in a 1-0 lead versus the Colombian player. I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Do let me know in the comments if you did. And I hope to follow up with the second game soon. Bye for now.